Hi, welcome to this new moon ceremony. My name is Janessa, if we haven't had a chance to meet yet, and I am here with you this evening from the Mother Hive. And I'd really like to welcome you to this sacred time, and I invite you to establish a sacred space for going within and connecting with this lunar energy. So if you are able, carve out a little nook or a little space just for yourself. Allow some time and uh, space for some quiet reflection and for our time together. You can also set up a simple altar or do something to beautify your space. So I am sitting looking at my altar across the room and I have a candle here with us this evening and some of my um, musical instruments and some tarot cards. So whatever, uh, whether it's flowers or candle, um, candle is very beautiful for our fire energy and any um, scents or essential oils. I have some, um, some sage here and some Palo Santo. So I'll be burning that. So whatever you can do to establish a really special space and um, the time to kind of just set aside for yourself to be present. And if you have a journal, perhaps you want to bring that and pause the video now and go and grab um, anything else that will help you be comfortable. And we're going to begin on this uh, is March 24th. Uh, new moon in Aries was this morning early at 5.28 a.m. Eastern. And this is, uh, Aries is the first uh, sign of the zodiac. And so we're immediately getting this energy of new beginnings, of new opportunities, of uh, clean slate and fresh start. And so this is a beautiful time, and um, especially coming right off of spring equinox, to tap into the power of this moon, this new moon in Aries, to set some intentions. The new moon is often a wonderful time to do intention work, whereas the, the full moon is a great time for release and letting go. So that's a really nice way to sort of structure and start to begin to align with lunar energies in a really um, accessible, simple way in your lives. So we are going to first begin. I'll call in the four directions to uh, allow us to feel some grounding and feel centered and also to call upon any allies and guides that want to be present in our ceremony this evening and that can be um, supportive for our work. So at this time, you're welcome to stand in your space or simply remain seated. If you'd like, you can um, rotate to uh, match the direction and uh, we will begin in the direction of the south, which for me is this way. So hopefully you can see me. So again, I invite you to close your eyes, to just find a comfortable stance. Um, you can stand with the palms open at the sides. Um, or seated on your thighs, whatever is uh, feeling comfortable for you tonight. Our mothers, grandfathers, guardians, and gatekeepers. the direction of south of our earth energy we call upon you this evening 
at this time of new moon. We ask you to be present in this circle. The earth we are listening, we hear your calls for balance, for restoration of balance. And we really need you at this time. We need your support. We need to feel grounded when a lot of us are feeling really unsteady and uneasy and lots of anxiety. So we ask that we remember to put our feet to your to the earth and that we Remember that you are always here for us and always supporting us. We call upon the energy of serpent. Serpent, you do not question when it is time to change. You simply embrace the transformation, embrace the change, shedding your old skin, letting go of anything that no longer serves you. And in this way, we ask that through the energy of earth in the direction of the south, that we may also tap into the serpent energy that we may humble ourselves, perhaps even getting down to our knees in prayer and in desperation, or even all the way belly to the earth like you serpent, and that we just would ask in the way of a humble servant, to receive the gifts of Mother Earth, of Pachamama, Gaia, that these would fill up our hearts and our souls and our physical bodies with renewed energy so that we may transform. Uh And now take a quarter turn To the west. Our mothers, grandfathers, guardians, and the keepers of the west of the energy of water. We call upon all of the water creatures. We call upon all of the rivers. We call upon the streams our beautiful waterfalls. And we ask that you support us with our emotions, especially at this time. You're feeling very anxious. You're feeling very stressed and very scared. We ask, dear water, that we remember that we are mostly water and that we can embrace this movement and this flow in each of our lives and that instead of pushing away or shoving down or repressing any energy, I'm sorry, any feelings or emotions that are rising that we 
look to the water for inspiration for how to allow the inner, the emotions to flow freely through the body. And that with this flow, we can return to a more balanced state for our internal state, our emotional state on a individual level, but also on the collective level. Before we rush to release and get rid of all of the emotion, we ask great spirit and energy of the West. But first we allow ourselves to be with the sadness and the anxiety, whatever emotions, the anger, the confusion. That we allow ourselves to feel the grief, to witness the grief in each other, to tap into the energy of the earth and of our polluted waters in particular. That through this awareness and this understanding, And from the messages from our many water protectors that we would come to a greater awareness, a deeper appreciation for the gift of water, because we know that water is life. That we would also have a greater awareness for our emotions Where we know that many around the world are really in a state of deep suffering, even before before the recent events and the struggle with the pandemic. There's so much suffering and sadness. and loneliness. But we remember that in the way of water, we can also call upon the water creatures like dolphin. Reminds us to be playful, to be childlike, and that this too shall pass, and that there's a full range of emotion and so while we can honor the sadness and anxiety, we can also honor those moments of joy and call that into our life, call in, let those moments flow into our hearts and into our lives. Allow our inner child to come forth and to find a sense of creativity. So many of us are reconnecting with our art, our music, our gifts, and are bringing those forth in the way of service to humanity at this time. And so we thank you, dear water, in the direction of west. And take a quarter turn to the north. Grandmothers, grandfathers, and keepers of the North. And the energy of air. We call upon you at this time. We call in the energy of woodpecker. 
fall of the winged creatures, especially hawk. We also call in heron. We ask that woodpecker in particular would help us break down and continue to, like he was pecking away at our third eye and just bring clarity to the situation and bring clarity to our lives and to pull away the veil so that things can be clear. We ask the gifts, for the gifts from Hawk, for that bird's eye view from up above to help us see what we cannot see right now, to help us let go of our obsessions, of our need to know, of our constant cycle of the news and the updates and the worry. We're calling upon Heron. We also ask that we be blessed with the energy of stillness, of patience, and of letting go of the need to control and understanding that when the time is right, we can take swift flight and take action. And that the clarity comes from stillness. And a quarter turn to the east. And mother gatekeepers of the east, the energy of fire. We call upon you to be present in this circle. We call for greater connection to spirit. We call for the guidance from our ancestors. We ask Grandmother Spider to be present as well. Continue to guide our connections to one another and to help us see how each of us is part of this greater web of life. And that through this deeper connection, we can begin to experience the beautiful transformation that is possible. And so it is. Beautiful, so if the eyes are closed, just taking a soft gaze and slowly coming back into the space. If you are standing, you may be seated now. Be sure to be seated with both feet flat on the floor. You're welcome to take Adi Mudra, Satans inside the fist and place them on the thighs or you can simply if you want to receive more palms can stay open but if you're feeling a little ungrounded palms facing down or adi mudra again a soft gaze 
Begin to notice the breath without any need to change it. Simply begin to hear the sound of the breath, to feel the lungs expanding and contracting. And now a deep inhale through the nose. And exhale. Repeat that simple breathing exercise a few more times. So inhaling to the count of four, exhaling for longer than four. If you're uh, able, you can work up to uh, eight. Anything longer than four on the exhale is the goal to really uh, lower the energy and to continue to ground for our, our um, sacred time and work this evening. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. So we're going to do a few rounds of mantra, of chanting, and we are going to, I've been called uh, a lot towards chanting uh, to Ganesha, and the chant is Om Gang. Ganapateye Namaha. I'll repeat it. Om Gam Ganapateye Namaha. And many are aware that Ganesha is seen as the remover of obstacles. So he is the, the elephant and with his big trunk and often shown um, with his big belly. So Ganesh places the obstacle as well. So when we think about him uh, removing the obstacles, it's helpful to also consider this beautiful, loving, figure, this elephant, to, or as the one that is placing whatever obstacle you're facing in front of you. And that when we come to this obstacle, that there is a higher purpose and that we are not facing this alone by any means and that we can call upon many guides and allies including Ganesh to remove this obstacle and just considering that this higher purpose and that there is a spirit or a, a reason for um, you know, it's not, um, it's not random. This obstacle isn't just there to make your life difficult or to make things more challenging for you, but is to help you grow. And so sometimes I'll consider that Ganesh has put this obstacle into my life in a very loving, giving way as a gift to me to continue my path and my journey and to grow. So uh, that can be helpful sometimes when we're bombarded with so many obstacles to sort of just picture, oh, like 
he's placing this obstacle here for me. And not only is he placing it, but he's right there to help guide me in removing this obstacle and seeking clarity on how it can help me grow. So uh, we'll begin a few rounds and we won't do 108 tonight or anything, but um, you're welcome to you know, pause the, the video and continue on if you would like, um, chanting 108 or uh, choosing another day to perhaps uh, continue. Oftentimes people will do a 40 day, 40 day um, practice. So you could, uh, you could work towards that if that feels right for you. So again, Om Gom Ganapateye Namaha. So feet to flat on the floor, hands can rest comfortably on the thighs. Soft gaze. And you're welcome to just listen to the chant or to join in at home. Om gum ganapataye namaha. 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 Om gum ganapataye Namaha, Om Gum Ganapataye Namaha, Om Gum Ganapataye Namaha, Om Gum Ganapataye Namaha, Om Gum Ganapataye Namaha. Draw the hands to Anjali Mudra or prayer position at the heart. Lower the hands and open the eyes. So I'd like to talk a little bit more about, about uh, Aries and this new moon in Aries. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, uh, Aries is the first sign in the zodiac, and so this is a wonderful opportunity to start new, to uh, begin again, to uh, you know wipe a clean slate, and whether it's in our relationships and our creative endeavors and um, anything to do with our physical body, whatever it may be, this is like a very, very highly fertile time to. Uh, plant any seeds of intention that you would like to set for the entire entire um, year. So, um, Aries is a is a fire energy, so a fire sign. And so, in addition to new beginnings, we get this like this um, initiation kind of energy. This like taking initiative of um, taking action and really sort of uh, finding what lights you up and what you're fired up about and using that as a way to motivate action. And I'd like to, in the way of, um, in the way of Heron, who came through when we were calling in the directions, that this, uh, energy of Aries, yes, there's a lot of like forcefulness and getting your ideas out there and starting your, your new business ideas or um, really moving forward in a relationship, etc. There's like lots of this like forward motion, but it's important to remember that the action needs to come from a very grounded state. So not from this, uh, very fiery emotional reaction or reactive kind of state, but uh, allowing the time and the energy and the space 
for the spirit to get still and find uh, find the answers from within and tap into your own intuitive knowledge. And from that grounded, silent uh, place of solitude, then the, the next right action can come through in in the way of alignment so one of the i know a lot of people choose um their intentions for the whole year uh and some others might choose just a word so my word um, has really been inspired by this beautiful card by ariel spillsbury and it is a line so i just love that image so the visual there of the spinal cord being the conduit from spirit down to earth and reminding us um, it might have been hard to see in the, in the image on your screen, but the sacred tool of the wand. So I've been working with my selenite wand and you can see her wand there um, in the card. But just really getting clear on uh, on my intentions of my goals and um, allowing the space and the time to consider what is in true alignment with those goals and with those intentions and uh, kind of, you know, pushing aside the, the fog or in the mist and getting clear and sticking to that, um, to that goal. So I would invite you uh, either now to pause or later this uh, after watching the video to consider what is your intention for this uh, upcoming lunar cycle? What are you in alignment with and what no longer feels in alignment for you? And another consideration is not just this internal um, ego-based or um, even just from your own desires, but rather like how can you open up to what spirit feels is al in alignment for you? And sometimes this is really hard, uh, especially if you're like me because I'm an Aries and I'm very stubborn. So uh, it's hard sometimes to let go of that control and to be um, more in a an open state for what spirit has lined up for me and what spirit is um, envisioning for my next step. So giving yourself the space again to be really grounded, to spend time in nature, to spend, you know, doing your practices, doing your physical practice, whether it's yoga or dance or walking doing your meditation practice, whatever that looks like for you, and really tapping into spirit in the way of an open, an open vessel. So a nice um, invitation for that could be something like, spirit, what do you intend for me at this time? Or great spirit, I am open to you use me as your vessel allow me to be open to what intentions you have for my life so i think you get the idea there so i would love to now lead you on a brief journey a shamanic journey and um because of the sound, I'm going to sit back a bit and do some drumming. So I'm going to set you up for the um, for the med the guided meditation, or rather not guided, but for the um, for the journey. So I'll kind of guide you through what um, how it might go. Uh, obviously, we'll just be open to what um, what comes through, but. If you've never journeyed before, don't worry. Uh, a couple tips for a beginner journeying is that uh, I will use the drum and you can find a comfortable space. You can either um, lie down 
or remain seated, whatever is comfortable for you. And when the drumming begins, you will basically start the journey. And by journey, we mean a visualization, uh, a use of your imagination to uh, perhaps move into a different, what shamans would consider a different realm, a different spirit world. So uh, they consider many traditions have three worlds, the lower world, the middle world, and the upper world. So where we are now would be considered, you know, ordinary realm, um, middle world. And so we will be uh, staying within that realm, but we'll be using our imagination to gain deeper awareness and deeper understanding and to tap into the guidance of the spirit world. So if it feels awkward and you um, are listening to the drumming and not really sure what's supposed to be happening, that's totally normal. If your mind takes over and becomes that monkey mind and super active and you have a hard time turning your mind off or you have a hard time not asking yourself, am I making this up or is this really what I'm seeing or picturing? Um, that is totally normal and happens a lot. So especially for, um, for us that are just, you know, doing our thing and being parents and working and, you know, participating, uh, if we're not, um, used to practicing in this way, it can feel really kind of hmm, like, did I just make that up? Or is this supposed to be going this way? Uh, so it gets easier, but uh, just be aware that there's no wrong way to do it. It's really your intention. And so just setting the intention that uh, you would like to journey this evening and that you are open to whatever, whatever comes through. So those are a few tips. And then the last tip is um, that when I am asking you to come back to this realm, to this space, to your body, I w you'll um, hear what's called sort of like a callback on the drum. So the drum beat will change and um, that will signify to you that it's time to come back. Uh, Please do not ever hear that and immediately rush back into the body um, or leave the journey. Like, please, like, follow through to the end and find your way out. Um, and this will make more sense as I um, give you a little more traction. But it's important to uh, come fully back to the body. So, just so that there's no. Um, unsettled feelings in the body afterwards um, we'll want you to to end feeling very grounded and settled so this is what i would like you to um to journey to do and the intention to set um in and how this can go so uh first will be a gate and however you picture your gate you will come to this gate to the beginning of the journey you will open the gate and you will begin to visualize yourself walking on a path. Uh, oftentimes, I imagine a garden off to the side, some sort of flowers, whatever is um, going to be like a very happy, calming place for you. So you can imagine that scene. Uh, you can perhaps imagine the sounds of the birds, the maybe the feel of the sun on your face, etc. And you'll be walking, continuing on the path and moving into a wooded area, into a forest. And in this part, you can imagine seeing the the large maybe pine trees or large um, oak trees around you. 
and this beautiful canopy above you, maybe pine needles or uh, leaves on the ground, etc. And you'll move deeper into the forest until you come to um, somewhat of a clearing. And in that area, I'm going to ask you to visualize that you come to a fire. And you are going to, in the journey, visualize yourself sitting down at the fire. So you're going to take in the scene, you're going to see the fire, you're going to know it's time to sit down when it feels right. And you're just going to observe who is there with you. Are you alone? Are there animals? Are there other spirits? Is there an ally or an ancestor that you meet? And if so, just notice any details or any um, energies or feelings or colors, sounds, sights, etc., that might come through for you. And then once you've had a chance to sort of take all of that in, you're going to ask this ally or this ancestor and if nobody appears that's fine too you can ask the energy of the fire the spirit of fire and you can say to your ancestor dear fire what guidance or gifts do you have for me at this time and then in the journey hopefully you will receive whatever gift or guidance these allies and ancestors want to offer you you will thank them and you will come back. If there's some sort of physical object that represents this gift or this blessing, then you will bring that with you and you will walk back out towards the gate. So moving away from the fire, back through the woods into the area of the garden, along the garden path, and then all the way back to the beginning, to the gate. You can close the gate. Now, if you're familiar with journeying or shamanic um, practices, and you are already uh, working with any animal guides or spirits, any protective guides, then obviously take them with you. If you don't have one yet, that's fine. If there's one that pops up to you or appears to you, then great. That is most likely an ally or a spirit guide that would like to work to protect you during uh, this journey. So find a comfortable spot, whether it's lying down or seated. I'm going to get the drum. So hopefully the sound comes through okay. I'm going to try to do gentle, but still um, good enough to get you through your journey. So we will uh, be going for, I'll say around maybe like eight minutes or so. Um, see how it goes. So close the eyes, take your comfortable seat, and just allow the sound of the drum. So remember the intention is to go to the fire, to sit at the fire and meet an ally or an ancestor, and to ask them what guidance or gifts they have for you at this time, and to return with those gifts.
keep the eyes closed, a soft gaze. Begin to raise the fingers, perhaps wiggle the toes. You are now fully back in your body, back in this room, listening to my voice. Begin to feel the rise and fall of the chest. Feel the earth beneath you supporting you. Beautiful. And now would be a beautiful time to pause the video and do any journaling or reflecting on any of the things that you saw or experienced in the journey. So on a journey, I'd love to have a journal nearby because I think I'm going to remember these amazing journeys and then I always forget if I don't write them down. So take time now, pause the video and just, just getting some Palo Santo going here. So just take some time to really sit and honor anything that came up for you in the journey, any messages, uh, any names or uh, particular animals or spirits or ancestors, be sure to get those down. And, you know, any, any other senses or, you know, like anything you smelled or um, saw, any objects, any symbols or anything, um, sometimes, they might not mean something right now, but when you go back and reread or you get continued messages from spirit, um, they'll all kind of click together. So record as much as you can. Thank you. And so I'd like to end our time together with um, a card on the deck here. So. These guys a little shuffle. So a really nice practice after that journey is to not only journal, but then to consider, like, is there something special that stood out to you in your journey that you could uh, represent with an object, with colors, with um, different energies. Uh, maybe you want to start to um, start your morning each day with uh, lighting a candle and maybe visualizing, or if you were lucky enough to get any, um, any animal uh, allies or spirits or um, any spirits of ancestors, um, maybe a, a family member that's passed or um, you know, a great grandparent or something. Um, if you have any photos, then that would be great um, to add to a little altar or your bedside to just to continue working with that energy. Um, you know, if you've got something more elemental like a special stone or um, you know, something from nature or maybe like this uh, energy of a tree or something, then 
whatever you can um, gather in nature or um, pictures of to represent that energy so that you can con continue to um, seek guidance from it, but also to, to um, continue to work with its um, gifts and receive in that way. All right, so I'm gonna pull a card. Let's see what comes up. Mm. So the card is the Knight of Vessels, Eel. So I love that this card uh, is so in line with the water energy because, um, and also the stones, the two big stones here. So I love that it's you know, sort of the, the banks and the stones. Um, it's hard to see perhaps on the video, but there's a, a beautiful sword engraved in that top stone there. Try to not get the glare there. There you go. So, so many beautiful messages in this card. So the energy of water, but um, right at the edge, we have the strength of stone people, which uh, many cultures believe uh, represent our ancestors. So this is um, perfect because we've just called upon our ancestors to sort of help us with this troubled time. And so there's a beautiful light sort of in the distance, um, the sun shining down onto the water. But that eel is... Um, and moving with the flow of the water, but is surrounded and supported by the energy of the earth with the trees and the grass on the bank and the, the stones. And reminds us to you know that we're not alone in this journey and that there are many guides on our journey that are supporting us. And I love that sword because it really speaks to, um, similar to the wand, really speaks to that energy of alignment, of the warrior energy of Aries. That there's um, a battle that we're all in, whether it be small or if we consider the global um, pandemic as a battle right now that we're all, you know, the collective is facing, that our ancestors are, are here and want to offer their wisdom and their guidance and their support, and that we need to call upon them as much as possible because they love us so much and want to want to guide us and help us to find more flow and to move through the emotions of this difficult time. So with that, um, draw the hands to the heart and we will end with a prayer and blessing. Dear Spirit, we thank you. We thank our ancestors, especially this during this call. We thank the energy of this new moon and Aries, this fire energy that helps us 
move forward, to take action. We pray that our time together and our journey gave us clarity and insight on who we can call upon to get guidance and support and perhaps more information on our intention for this lunar cycle and what feels in alignment for us at this time in our lives and how we can let go of the rest and move towards that intention that every action we take is in true alignment with our soul's purpose We pray that before acting, we remember to sit with the earth, to sit with the stones, the trees, and the water, and the sky. And to listen deeply Listen with our hearts and our minds wide open so that we may receive your messages and be an open vessel. And that with this guidance that we can serve as a channel for spirit to move through our bodies as a vessel out into the world. serving in the way of love. Amen, awen, aho, blessed be. Thank you very much for joining me for this video. Sweet love.